Whether you've taken a short break or been on a hiatus of multiple years, this video is going to help you get back up to speed. So whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. No matter where you've last logged out and where you've just logged in, let's start off by cleaning your interface. This is after all the screen you're going to be staring at all day. If you want a clean starter preset, press escape and choose the retro preset. After doing that, select the edit layout option because you are able to adjust all kinds of interfaces, although you probably don't know what many of these do yet. If you end up changing anything, be sure to save it using one of the preset save buttons. In the edit layout mode, you can adjust and move around different interfaces, including the buff bar, the bank size, the XP pop-ups, and much more. If you want any recommendations on stuff to turn on, I recommend turning on the in-game clock and turning on the Slayer and Reaper counter. You're going to be needing these later on. Next up, I'd like to focus your attention to the main buttons on your interface. When highlighted, these will allow you to open up a variety of small interfaces, but when clicked on, they have their own little open up interface. The hero button shows you a summary of your account and can also allow you to check out various achievement sets. These can be used to set goals as achievement sets do actually have rewards. The next button is the customization button which allows you to summon pets, select titles, change your appearance, select animation overrides in case you own them, and change up your cosmetic outfit. The Adventures button allows you to see the latest content, see which quests you've completed from certain quest lines, your daily challenges, which you should do for experience and item rewards, which mini games are currently active, or D&Ds, the amount of boss and slayer kills you have, including collection logs, and an activity tracker for the path system. The powers icon allows you to see and preview what abilities do and what kind of buffs you can gain from them, and where they work or don't work. Could be useful if you're trying to figure out what an ability really does. The community section allows you to see what event is currently active. It has a grouping system which can be useful for group PVM. It has a social and high score section and a voting section if Jagex ever decides to pull new content. The upgrades and extra system is basically an MTX place which uh, it's pretty straightforward. The room metric section is actually quite interesting, as even with the free version, you can track how much experience you've gained in a single skill. Quite useful if you do like tracking whatever you're doing. For example, me killing this rabbit here gives me one experience in attack, strength, and defense. You can set up this interface so that you can view it at all times when playing the game, and you can even make it transparent in your settings. Speaking of settings, if you press escape and click settings, there are a ton of things you could adjust. The interface of RuneScape 3 is incredibly adjustable and customizable. I'm not going to be going through everything since this isn't an interface guide, so I definitely recommend you go through this in your own time and simply check what everything does. Some things I do recommend taking a look at are the game clock and notifications for your favorite minigames or D&Ds. Having Revolution Combat Mode turned on, which automatically triggers every single type of ability, this is going to help you transition from Legacy to Revolution Combat in case you haven't tried that yet ever. Taking a look at what kind of combat experience you gain per combat skill as this can also be changed. Perhaps displaying an extra action bar which can be used to drag and drop items on top of which can be key bound to quickly use or quickly drop items when skilling. And finally perhaps a very important one the different camera modes which you know depend on your own liking. Do you like to zoom out more? Do you like the classic look? Do you like the freedom look? Just play around with it and see what you like. The action bar itself is also customizable. You can minimize it. You can add abilities to it after unlocking it by clicking the lock. Then you have to, you know, drag and drop abilities from the ability section. There's a lot of things you can do with the action bar. If you want a basic action bar setup, you can actually right click and choose setup action bar automatically. This won't give you a good bar, but it will give you something. If for whatever reason you're a completely new play in terms of RuneScape 3 or modern RuneScape, I highly suggest going ahead and taking a look at my combat for beginners video as it goes into all the nitty gritty details about combat. In the top right corner of your screen, there should be a mini map. Now, this mini map can be adjusted in size if your interface is unlocked, which you can unlock by pressing L. There's also a world map icon and something even more important, the lodestones icon. 
Lodestones are your primary way of moving around RuneScape. They basically teleports to any major city or area in RuneScape. These can actually be dragged and dropped on top of your action bar if you want quick access to these lodestones. You unlock lodestones by walking to them manually and then simply clicking on them to unlock them. The final thing I think is worth mentioning is the item tool belt which you can access by simply going to your equipment icon and then clicking on this little tool belt icon. The tool belt can be used to add certain tools, for example a pickaxe or a fishing rod, so that you no longer need these tools when actually doing the activity. You should already have a bunch of basic stuff on your tool belt even if you haven't played in six, seven, eight years. But if you want higher level stuff, for example, high level pickaxe on your tool belt, you're going to have to add it manually by right clicking it in your inventory and adding it to your tool belt. Please keep in mind that augmented equipment with the invention skill cannot be added to the tool belt. Now that you've familiarized yourself with the interface, what should you do? There's so much content in RuneScape nowadays that you might be completely overwhelmed. Don't worry, I've got you covered. Let's start off with quests. Now, quests are a core part of RuneScape and quite important for a variety of unlocks. But what you might not yet know is that quests are also a good way of obtaining starting cash. Every 25 quest points, you obtain a magical dice from different tiers depending on your quest points from the quest caravan. These actually give you clue score rewards depending on the tier of dice. But it doesn't end there. Completing quests can give you access to hybrid armor and a tier 75 hybrid weapon. It can also give you access to a lore hound which can be used for quests and it increases your area loot range by two tiles when out. The quest caravan is located next to the Varok Lodestone. If you're looking for a list of fun and new quests, take a look on screen. But if I can suggest any out of these quests, I highly recommend trying Violet's Blue 1 and 2, Once Upon a Slime, the Once Upon a Time series, which is four mini quests, and the City of Sentistan quest, which unlocks four new magic spells. But it does require a bunch of other quests, so just keep that in mind. Next up, skilling. Now, skilling is a core part of RuneScape gameplay and can be done through traditional training methods or dailies like Gathixian Caches. There are two skills I highly recommend checking out if you haven't been playing RuneScape for a while, and those are Invention and Archaeology, RuneScape's two newest skills although being out for quite a while already. Invention is one of the most unique RuneScape skills, a skill that allows you to augment and perk up your gear, and best of all, it can be trained while doing combat or skilling at the same time. Now, while Invention isn't immediately unlocked because it requires level 80 smithing, crafting, and divination, Archaeology does not have any requirements to start. In fact, you can even level it to level 20 and free to play. Archaeology is a skill that consists of you discovering artifacts and then restoring them, completing mysteries, which are little mini quests, and much more. There's plenty of stuff to explore with archaeology, so it's definitely worth a try. It's also considered to be one of the more enjoyable skills to train. If you're looking for skilling goals or training up your stats, there's plenty to go for. Quests and achievement set requirements, for example. Cute skilling pets, which you have a random chance of receiving while skilling. Milestone capes every time you reach 10 higher in every single skill that's available. 99 and 120 capes. Max capes. PVM related goals like 96 Herbal or 95 Prayer and 96 Summoning to increase the power of your account. Or perhaps you're just doing your daily challenges or moving up your way in a Yak Track event, given that one is active when you're watching this video. But let's say you're not as interested in skilling or you're already maxed and you just want to do some combat stuff. Well then Slayer, which is technically a skill but it falls under combat, is definitely worth mentioning. If you plan to train up combat skills, make some money, or you're looking for charms for summoning, Slayer is the way to go. Now you might remember how Slayer works, and it really hasn't changed, ever. You do have more Slayer creatures nowadays though, especially since Slayer goes up to level 120 now. Including stuff like Nodon creatures, Corrupted creatures, Dinosaurs, Volblooms, and more. Three things you might not know about the Slayer skill is that it's easier to pick up items nowadays using area loot, which automatically updates and can be keybound in your settings. At level 99 Slayer, you unlock your own Slayer dungeon, given that you have Menaphos unlocked, in which you can place the majority of the monsters in the game after capturing their souls using Ushabtis. We also have Slayer collection logs based on region, allowing you to obtain a unique title once completed. But the creme de la creme of RuneScape gameplay is of course PVM, aka bossing. And in 2021, there are a ton of different bosses to choose from. So many in fact that you might not know where to start. And while I wouldn't really be able to tell you exactly where to start because I'm not sure what your account looks like, 
my go-to picks for returning players would be the Arglaesaur and Krosos. The Arglaesaur is a noob-friendly boss which allows you to turn on and off mechanics to your own personal liking, and it's a pretty easy boss to do even with low combat stats. Krosos, on the other hand, is RuneScape's one and only skilling boss, and it's also fairly accessible to the average returning Joe. That being said, I definitely recommend watching a guide or asking a player how it works before hopping into your public lobby because you might get flamed in case you're doing something wrong. Other bosses to consider could be the Rex Matriarchs, basically being Dagonoff's 2.0 or Carapac. Now, if you didn't leave it that long ago and you're fairly confident in your ability to PVM and RuneScape despite having taken a break, consider trying out Raksha or Zuck. But keep in mind that these bosses are not pushovers and require dedication and good gear to take down. If you're having issues trying to get to certain bosses, you should know that there's a PVM hub nowadays located close nearby the Draenor Lodestone. It does have a requirement of either level 60 combat or 1000 total level though. This PVM hub allows you to teleport directly to bosses after having killed them just once, saving you a ton of time walking. Alongside portals, the PVM hub has a magnitude of useful unlocks which can be bought by using Marks of War, a currency that is rewarded for killing bosses. And just like Slayer, you might welcome the news that bosses have collection logs as well, rewarding you with a unique title if you manage to obtain every single rare drop from a given boss. These are long-term goals you can go for if you really like a single boss more than the others. So there you have it, a bunch of goals or things to do in RuneScape since you've returned. I'm sure you'll be able to keep yourself busy, and if you're too busy, perhaps consider playing RuneScape on mobile instead of on PC. RuneScape Mobile is available on iOS and Android, and especially useful if you're planning to do a bunch of AFK activities. Now if I could give you one tip as a new player, I highly recommend using the RuneScape wiki or YouTube related guides if you're struggling to figure out anything in this game. Both the wiki and video guides are incredibly useful sources of information to quickly get up to speed with any topic you're looking to understand more of. If neither of these can help, feel free to hop into my Discord linked in the description below to ask your questions in the advice channel. But with that being said, we've come to the end of this video. If you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, leave a like down below and maybe even consider subscribing. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.